Good morning, folks. Actually took an hour off yesterday and just sat on the porch staring at the snow-capped Sandia Mountains with white peaks trailing southward down the line as well. Heck of a way to end the month of April in the desert. But anyway, that's not why you're all here, is it? Let's head over to spaceweathernews.com. Finding it wasn't exactly a day of eruptive activity, had only one minor rejection, and it came quick with a pop top right departing as what looked like an explosive punctuation to a coronal jet. Much of the plasma likely didn't make it out. And the flare associated was the definition of impulsive. Very minor, and the sunspots are not going to change that today with just one little guy on the south. Interesting story in the solar wind is the stream is ultra calm, but a phi angle shift, a mere twist of magnetism, has continued the lower level electron flux. Still technically around low level storm conditions, but a full order of magnitude lower than before, and when we come to the full year of data, you see the 365 day peak that just occurred, and now we look back at a storm that used to be about 10 times stronger. Coming down to the ground where a volcano just went on alert in the Caribbean. Increased activity of the seismic nature is already being felt by people on nearby islands. And in foreshock news, we have non-blot factors striking the Pacific Ridge basically on the same latitude. So folks, as we get into the top articles today, many of you have seen what we call the spaghetti models of hurricane forecast tracks. There are tons of models, and the tracking of those models for accuracy is done on an annual basis. You've got a link below to see which did the best overall, which was accurate over 120 hours, at 24 hours, and everywhere in between. Up next, we've got yet another article describing how our climate models of the future are about as pure as a politician. Models say one thing, reality shows another. Tropical forests are kicking carbon uptick into high gear and that is only expected to continue. Sticking with the weather topics, I wanted to show you the realization of the polar vortex shift of the season. North is gone, just a mild flow now. Meanwhile, in the south, we can really see the vortex kicking up to powerful levels. We will revisit this at the end of summer to see the transition beginning back the other way. Quick note from the Weather Channel, their May prediction is pretty much the opposite of NOAA's. Pretty much flip-flop the cold side and the warm side. We will have weather from around the world, including that storm line in the U.S. heading at Billy and our plasma lab down in Georgia today. Folks, Mercury and Venus are about to enter heliocentric conjunction, so more solar eruptions are possible. We'll have the planetary geometry for the month on the website coming up in just a few hours. It's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.